Hi, John from Jones here. We're going to be talking about our endless summer flight. And we have wines that are red, white, and blue. It's not the order we're going to taste them in, but uh, it's very patriotic. So uh, we're going to uh, pause after I talk about each one of the wines so that you can take the time to enjoy the wine. Please don't rush. Enjoy the day, enjoy with your company. And uh, when you're finished wine, move on to the next one and uh, push the uh, back to action button and we'll get started. So our first wine is Whimsical White. And if you take a look at the cap here, you can see that it's uh, a bubbly. And uh, this is made in the same process that Prosecco is made in Italy. However, these are Jones grapes. We use uh, one called Vidal Blanc and one that's actually a cross between Riesling and Cayuga. And it doesn't have a real name. And it, so it's Jones grown. The, the level of bubbles in here is not as full on sparkling as our strawberry. The Italians have a name for that. It's called frizzante. So you're going to see a little bit less bubbles. So even though it has those bubbles, uh, don't be afraid to give it a little swirl. Give it a couple of sniffs. And you're going to pick up aromas and flavors. Maybe you're going to see some and smell some uh, a tangerine, uh, nectarine, peach, apple. And that's what to me makes this a little bit more complex than the average Prosecco. When I take my first sip, I just take one sip, not to judge the wine, but just to clear out my palate. And then when I take a real sip, move the wine all around your mouth so that you can get all the taste receptors in there, get, get them all stimulated. And you'll start seeing some of the same flavors that you had when you, uh, when you first sniffed it. Now, this is a wine with uh, pressure in it. So when you open it, please be careful. Don't point it at yourself or anyone else and uh, stay safe. It's a wine, though, that you can have by itself, easily, toasting and, and that sort of thing. But also, uh, you can put, we put the blueberry in it, we put the black currant in it, we've put uh, our, our raspberry in there, and it makes really a nice, a nice drink. But for foods, imagine trying this with fried chicken. Try it with some cheeses. It's a really great wine. It's very versatile. And again, 100% Jones grown. So uh, enjoy. And uh, if you'd like to pause right now, and we'll be back for the next one coming right up. Moving on, we're going to the uh, Blueberry Bliss. And this is a wine made out of just blueberries, Jones blueberries, fermented. Uh, no flavorings added, no uh, artificial stuff added. So it's just fermented blueberries. And uh, it's a, a little... Uh, it's the type of wine that you can do many things with. One, you can drink it. It's, uh, it's, it's, that's what it's here for. But as you taste it, think about it over some uh, cheesecake. Think about it over some ice cream. Think about adding it to the Whimsical White or another bubbly. Uh, you'd be surprised how versatile this can be. A little bit of this goes a long way. So if you don't finish the bottle in one night with your partners, uh, Try it the next day with a, making it for a cocktail flavor. There's so many martinis these days with so many different flavorings that uh, blueberry can be, uh, be one of those flavors. So after you taste it and try it and drink it, another great thing to do is when it's a half bottle and it's empty, clean it out, save it, and use that to put wine in that you maybe don't finish one night and you won't have as much of an airspace. So uh, you're drinking blueberries right from our farm here and uh, enjoy that. We're going to pause over here and give you one more chance to enjoy before we come back. Our final wine in this flight is the Beacon Light Number no. 8. And uh, this is a wine that was developed really by popular demand. Uh, people said, you know, I like red wines, but I, I'm not crazy about the dry ones. And you don't have a off-dry red. And they said, you're right. And so... This was invented. Now, this particular wine has most every of the red, every one of the red grapes that grow on the farm are, uh, are in this bottle. There's a good dose of Cabernet Franc in there too. But then they leave it just a little bit sweet. Now, uh, as you taste this wine, remember to do the swirl and sniff. But as you're tasting, see if it reminds you a little of sangria. Uh, one of our tasters, David, uh, would mix this with the first blush, and it makes a really nice sangria type. Uh, drink, so give that a try someday. But uh, the wine is uh, great with spicy foods. If you have a really fiery dish and you try a dry wine, it, it sometimes makes the dry wine taste not so good. But with a 
when it has the fruit and a little bit of sweetness, it really, really does well. If you look carefully at the label, you're going to see a, a tower, a light with a tower, a tower with a light on top. And uh, years ago, in the 1920s, say, when airplanes wanted to fly at night without a lot of instruments, it was very difficult. And they came up with a system of towers and beacon light towers that they would place every 10 miles, and the pilots could watch for the towers and fly in a straight line. And the property where Jones grapes are grown now was once a dairy that had a beacon light on it. And that was the eighth light. So the name Beacon Light Number Eight comes from an actual historical uh, occurrence. So enjoy the wine, enjoy the day. Uh, try it with uh, chilled. Try it with mold with some spices. There's many ways you can drink this wine. And uh, don't forget, take home your dragonfly glass. Thanks for uh, visiting and supporting your local farmers. Cheers. <laughs>